Welcome back to the Dare to Dream podcast. This is episode number 39, and I'm Gregory Russell Benedict. And I am Vincent Van Patten. And this is a podcast for people who want to get the absolute most out of life and who dare to dream bigger. And today we have the absolute pleasure of interviewing Tom Kugler. Tom is a writer, a vlogger, an online business owner, and a digital nomad currently living in Mexico City. Tom is a top writer on medium.com where he created the publication, The Postgrad Survival Guide, which sports more than a half a million page views per month. He's written articles for the Huffington Post, Dipley, Thought Catalog, The Mission, Elite Daily, and so many other top publications. Most of all, Tom is a great dude who has inspired me profoundly. Tom, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's really great to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. That's quite a that's quite an amazing uh, introduction. So, thank you. I hope I can live up to it with my with my answers. I'll try. Of course, man. I just want to say, you know, at the onset of this, that you really inspired me to start blogging initially um, about four years ago. I graduated from college from Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, and I was didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I was working. Um, my first job was in retail, just in my hometown of Malibu, and I knew something a part of me um, enjoyed writing. But I, I so I studied journalism, and I never really wrote what I wanted to write about. You know, I was writing about um, news and just like small town stuff and and slow, and I never really like was gripped by just the joy of writing. And then once I graduated, I was kind of just floating around a bit, not sure where to go next, and I came across your your lifestyle, your brand, and just the digital nomad life that you were living, which, you know, we'll get into it, but it's not all glamour. Like it, you know, a lot of us might think, but at the time I was like, damn, I know that's what I want to be doing. And I think you were living, I don't know if you were living in the Philippines yet, but, um, you just inspired me, man. I came across like a few of your articles and I was hooked and started writing on medium. And four years later, I, I know it's at least for now, what I want to do with my life full time. So thank you. <laughs> well, if you, if you let me know the year, like the approximate year you started reading me, I can let you know if I was in the Philippines or not. I'm like, sure. 2017, I graduated. And so that must've been it. It was like just the summer after. Okay. I wasn't there yet, but I was dreaming of it. I have, a, <laughs> I wrote it, I wrote it down. I wrote like a hundred goals down in my journal and uh, go to the Philippines, you know, visit the Philippines was, was definitely in that in those 100 goals. And then I, in May of 2018 is when I finally made it over there to the Philippines for the first time. So I was still in my parents' house. I was still <laughs> just like grinding out blog posts in my parents' house. But I did go on a trip um, in 2016 across the country. And so um, I did have a little traveling under my belt and I saw like 23 states and I was hooked on travel. So um, yeah, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I think that was actually what I saw that. I saw that you did the cross country road trip. You're from Baltimore, right? Or yes. Yeah. I'm from Baltimore, you know, go Orioles. We just snapped our 19 game win streak our losing streak. Sorry. So oh, we're, you know, our, the doldrums are over. We're going to the world series yeah. next year, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm from Baltimore. I guess uh, maybe we we'll start there. What, what inspired that first initial cross country road trip? Yeah. So, um, when I, I graduated college in 2015 in May and, um, I went to Florida because I did a Disney college program internship in 2014. And I made a lot of friends and I knew I wanted to go back and live there. Um, I went to school in Pennsylvania, which is super cold, great state, really cool state, a lot of great people, but I wanted somewhere warmer. So I moved to Florida, uh, tried to find a job there, went on like 30 interviews and just, just could not land a, land a job. It was just really hard. I'm, I'm not a good interviewer. Um, <laughs> at least I, I wasn't back then in, in, in a job interview setting. Like when I'm talking to you guys, it's all good. But in a job interview setting, I feel like I must say the right thing or else I'm going to go to hell or something. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I like couldn't find a job. So I started freelance writing online and on Upwork and I started getting winning jobs and things like that. And I fell in love with like writing just for other people. I thought it was just the coolest thing that I could write words and make money for that. And uh, about six months into my freelancing journey, I, I stumbled upon this blog on Pinterest um, from, or I don't know whether it was Pinterest or not, but uh, it was Adventurous Kate, adventurouskate.com, her blog. And she's a travel blogger. And uh, she was writing about how she travels the world and makes money doing it and how she's been to, you know, 80 some countries or whatever it was, was back then. 
And I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. I really want to do this. I want to be what I want to do what she does. And um, so that was what originally sort of like got my mind going on. I think I want to like travel and try to make money doing that at the same time. And then I figured I wanted to be a travel blogger as well, which travel bloggers, they go to a place, they review certain places to go to, and they give you like a guide, you know, they go to like Mexico city and they give you a guide on Mexico city, let's say. And so I knew that if I wanted to do that, I needed to travel. (laughs) So I was like, I better like, you know, go travel across the United States and see what, if I can make this happen. And so that was sort of where the, uh, the inspiration came from. Nice. And how did, how was that experience for you? What what was maybe the, top couple of takeaways. I mean, obviously um, life-changing, but yeah, it was just super life-changing. Um, I think like, wow. I, like when I, I think I was like about three weeks into my road trip, I'd, I'd hit New Orleans, Austin, El Paso. And then my car, my car brakes started to, to get a little weird, feel a little weird. And so I had to go and get like emergency, like break replacements and like they had to replace everything and it cost me like a thousand bucks and like back then my bank account looked like you know had two thousand bucks in it so like a thousand bucks you know was just like such a hard hit Mm -hmm. um i think i think i learned that i could take care of myself out there and i also just learned that um that i had this epiphany when i went to uh tucson arizona i went to this this canyon near just outside of tucson uh called sabino canyon and if anybody is like near Tucson or anything like that, I like definitely urge you to go. Everything's beautiful out West anyway, like Arizona is a beautiful state. Um, but I went to this Canyon with my friend and um, I just remember like thinking to myself, um, I'm out here, like in this beautiful place with my friend and um, I don't really have much money, but I'm making it happen. And uh, I'm just like really, really surprised that I could do something like this. You know, I think when we get out of college, when we graduate, we think to ourselves, you know, um, I'm worthless. I can't get a job. I I don't know what I'm doing. And I hear I was like, so like 2000 miles away from my, from, from home in this beautiful place, like just there, I was there, I I made it. And so I just had this realization, like we really can do more than we think we can. And so I think that was the, the main takeaway that I, that I, that I had, even if you're young. Uh, you can do more than you think you can. And that's why I made the postgrad survival guide because I wanted to encourage young people to like, you know, shoot for the stars a bit more and, and um, believe in themselves a bit more. So yeah, that's, that's it. I love what you said there. I didn't have much money, but I was out there making it happen. I think it's so powerful to realize that we don't have to wait until you have six digits in your bank account to start living your dream. You can start now and through the realization of your dream. And as you grow along that journey, you will accrue the money. And I I have to say this quote because I know that you're a Jordan Peterson fan as well. You accrue incremental wisdom as you implement your flawed plan. And that's what we do this podcast. That's what I run my company by. Like that is kind of a life lesson that I haven't been able to stop thinking about since I first heard it. Yeah, I, I incredible through your through your flawed plan. I love that part of it, you know, because all of our plans are flawed in some way. And it's not, not never a perfect plan. And so yeah, I think like if you're young, a good piece of advice would just to just to be to to, to go out on an adventure or to try to do something out of your comfort zone. And sort of just expect that your plan is going to fail. And, um, and many times you'll be surprised to see that it actually works. <laughs> and so it worked for me a little bit, a little bit, a little too much. And uh, I relied on my friends and, and they helped me out a lot. But um, yeah, I, I love that quote. I'm going to have to, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether that was from his first book, second book, or one of his blog posts, but it's a great quote. That reminds me of... Seth Godin says, he's like, what would you do if you knew you would fail? And that pretty much takes the pressure off. It's like, we expect ourselves, like, I'm only going to do this thing if I know it's going to succeed. And obviously, how can we take any chances? How can we actually follow our dreams and do what we actually want to do if we only expect to succeed? Obviously, you're a huge proponent of that. And you've had success because you've taken your shot. 
Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> like I just, I think a lot of people, and you can even see this in, in, in blogging as well. You know, um, people want to be perfect. They want to write the perfect blog post. They're terrified of pressing the publish button a lot of times, which I also felt that, 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 uh, that, um, fear as well when I first got started. And so, yeah, a, a lot of this, a lot of, maybe even when I'm here in Mexico city, I have a lot of fear every day to talk to people in Spanish, but it's like, Tom, you, you got to get over it. It's probably <laughs> going to be uncomfortable. Um, but if you're going to learn, if you're going to improve, you got to sort of get used to that being uncomfortable. And you sort of got to wake up every day and say to yourself, I'm going to be uncomfortable today. And that's just how it's going to be. And, um, and, and so, yeah, I'm even, and, and, and this is something too, maybe this is another wrinkle to this conversation is like, you never sort of get over the hump and say like, okay, uh, I'm used to being uncomfortable now for the rest of my life. No, like you're, if you're pushing yourself and if you want to lead a life of personal growth, it's, it's never going to get any easier is what I'm trying to say. And um, so this is something that five years later, I'm still dealing with this stuff and uh, I'll be dealing with it for the next, you know, however many years I'll, I'll, I'll survive, you know, <laughs> let's, let's hope it's a long time. <laughs> for sure. It's, I mean, I don't, we could just go rattle off Jordan Peterson quotes all day, but it's like, he talks about just how we, we don't know what we can become unless we get out there and literally like push against the walls of who we are by exposing ourselves to new experiences, talking to people. And that's like, there's so much of us biologically and just mentally that won't come to the surface unless we are challenged. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, <laughs> I'm just happy. I, I I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I love Jordan Peterson. I agree totally <laughs> with everything you're saying. We just so. recite his book. That's what we use. <laughs> um, so how how'd you end up in Mexico City? Like I I thought you were still in the Philippines. Can you tell us just what's been going on um, in your life and what's brought you there? A lot. A lot's been happening <laughs> in my life. Um, uh, it might be might be useful to talk about. Actually, some some I recently really had a bad time in my life um uh for no particular reason it just sort of moved away from the philippines i came back home in um december of 2020 and uh i stayed with my with my family for quite a long time for about six months for about yeah six months or so and uh, i broke up with a long-term girlfriend that i had and i just started to realize that i had a lot of flaws in myself still um wasn't 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 a uh the perfect boyfriend by any stretch of the imagination. I could have been better in the relationship. Um, I had got a lot of followers on Facebook because I made a bunch of videos about the Philippines and I got sort of, you know, um, a lot of followers there. And uh, I sort of didn't know how to handle that. We could probably get into that too. Um, and I started to sort of try to reevaluate like everything that I was doing and think to myself, like, what's really important? Um, I'm flawed. Uh, and and I was sort of like in this wasteland where I was like at my parents' house and we're living in the, in COVID right now in this COVID world. So I was thinking like, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Like, what's my plan? And so I read Jordan Peterson's book. Let's, let's just talk about Jordan Peterson all the time. Um, so I read Jordan Peterson's book, um, 12 More Rules for Life. And I remember, you know, he was just coming out with that book in March. And I was like, if, if anybody's going to help me get out of this rut, because Jordan just went through a huge rut with his addiction to ben benzos and everything like that and getting out of that. And he wrote a book. I was like, it's, it's going to be Jordan. Jordan's going to help me get out of this rut. And he did. And he's like, one of the things he told me was not me, but he told everybody is that, uh, you know, he's not speaking to me specifically. I wish, but he said, uh, aim for something. You should have something to aim for. And so I was like, I mean, what the heck do I want to aim for here? I don't even know. Um, I love jujitsu. So I was like, maybe I can go to Brazil and train jujitsu with like proper Brazilian, you know, black belts. Um, you know, that would sort of be like, I don't know. I it'd be like learning, you know, basketball from LeBron James or something. I was like, that'd be really cool. Um, yeah. so I booked a plane ticket to Brazil and like a week or two weeks before I was supposed to go to Rio, uh, Rio locked down completely. Their, their COVID cases spiked. So I had to cancel that. 
And so I was like, where do I want to go? I was like, this sucks. I'm like really in a rut right now. You know, I aimed at something and I couldn't go there. And like, what am I even doing? And so I was like, mm, Mexico City sounds pretty cool. It wasn't really for any particular reason. I thought it was a cool place. I've always wanted to go to Mexico. And um, I decided to just uh, to just come here. I love Mexican food too. And um, I tried to learn Spanish. I've been learning Spanish for the past four months. It's still terrible, but I at least understand some of the basic words. And um, yeah, and that's that's why I'm here. And thankfully, I found a really good gym here, which has a bunch of like Brazilian black belts coming through all the time. They're like, it's like new black belts every week. So I was like, I really, you know, I got, I got to kill two birds with one stone here, you know? So I, I was happy. And that's, that's how I got here. There we go. What do you have any sort of idea, like how long you might be there? Or are you kind of just taking it day at a time at this point? Yeah. So I'm looking for an apartment now. I'm trying to, I would like to stay here for another year. Um, and uh, I like my gym. I just, at some point you just sort of got to put down roots. I read about this recently about digital nomadism and how sometimes um, it, it, after a while, it can get a little monotonous. It can get a little repetitive. It's like, all right, I got this Airbnb. I'm going to move to the next Airbnb and I'm going to say goodbye to this owner. And, you know, and, and it's, just a, it's just a never ending streak of goodbyes, you know, and like, I'm never going to see this person again. And, and it's sad. And like, I didn't want to have that be my life anymore. I sort of want to just put down roots just anywhere. I don't even care. I don't care if it's in, you know, Mexico or Poland or, you know, Canada or Antarctica. I don't care. As long as I put down roots somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I want to, I want to live here for the next, you know, year to two years at the very least. Nice, man. That sounds awesome. Any just notable highlights or funny stories so far that, have, I mean, yeah, anything like that? Just, uh, um, you know, like, are, are you loving I, I just, it so far? I love it. I do. I love it here. Uh, the food is just fantastic. Uh, weirdly <laughs> enough, I have just been so, uh, it's sort of been boring. It's actually sort of been boring. Um, I sort of just stay in here like a lot of the time and work like all day. I go to jujitsu uh, a couple times a week. That's been super fun. Um, I don't know. I, I think like the whole hospital thing, I went to the hospital, I had kidney stones. I had to get <laughs> an operation done and, you know, conversing with people in Spanish and like not understanding a word they're saying to me is, was sort of funny. Um, uh, it's just been, it's, it, it, it's, it's sort of been, um, not, not as, not as, uh, uh, eventful as you might think it would have been, as you think might think it would be. Um, but that's just because I've done a lot, you know, in the Philippines, I've learned a lot of adventures and met a lot of people, went to a lot of places. I sort of just wanted to come to a place and sort of be by myself. I sort of like, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now. And like, they have like these like scenes of like people in the church and they're like whipping themselves. I sort of like, I'm doing that to myself right now. I'm sort of like giving myself penance, you know, or something. I think that's what you would call it for like so. my mistakes in the past. I'm trying to just like be by myself and think about these things. So you call me at a really interesting time. Do you yeah, really, are you sure? Perfect. Are you sure you want to keep interviewing me? Like, I feel <laughs> like I'm therapy not, you know? session. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. We definitely, we definitely want to keep going. And Good. I'd love to circle back to what you were talking about, how you, you had a tough time handling kind of blowing up. Like you got a lot of followers on Facebook. You saw a lot of success quickly. And I would just love to know more about what that was like and then what you started noticing in, in yourself that you weren't a fan of yeah it's um it's really weird because um sometimes in the philippines i'd be in the in the, in the um i'd be in the uh the mall and like someone would come up to me and be like are you tom like are you that vlogger that i saw on facebook i swear this happens sometimes not a lot but it happens sometimes and it's like very weird for that to happen and it's like, I don't really deserve this. Like probably the only reason I got famous, well, we could talk about this as a whole other topic too, but like probably the only reason I got famous was because I said a bunch of good things about the Philippines on Facebook and I get, it got, I got a lot of shares, you know, among, among Filipinos. I've always loved the Philippines though. And I've always loved their culture. So I wasn't doing it for, for that, but there was a certain part of me that understood that if I talked more about the Philippines, I'd get more followers. And I wanted that. I wanted that. I wanted to make it my business. I wanted to do, you know, Walt Disney said, we don't make 
movies to make money, we make money to make more movies. And so that was sort of my thing. I wanted to make more videos about the Philippines because I loved it. I wanted to make, I wanted to make money and make some more videos and, you know, hopefully uplift other people. But um, yeah, I got like a lot of followers and um, sometimes I started to think to myself, I want to make videos that will make, have a bigger impact than your country's awesome. You know, like that gets boring out after a while. Um, and so I wanted to start to talk about issues that, you know, could possibly like help people. There's a lot of poverty in the Philippines, like the government's, you know, corrupt. Sometimes there's some corrupt politicians. That's not, that's not, um, uh, what's the right proper word for that? That's not controversial. It's, it's true that there's a lot of like corrupt politicians there. And so I wanted to try to start to speak about these things and to try to talk about some of the toxic parts of like Filipino culture, because I saw a lot of people suffering and they wanted me to talk about these things. And so I felt weird talking about it, but I also like felt compelled to. And so when I started to talk about these things, I, I got a lot of blowback and um, I got a lot of blowback in the comments. And I was just like, this just really sucks. Like getting called all these names, um, like borderline death threats, um, just like a lot of just weird, really weird stuff happening. Um, and you sort of start to have this weird um, reaction to the fame a little bit. And I don't want to say I'm really, really famous. I just don't, I don't, I don't really see myself like that at all. Um, in the Philippines, maybe, but like, uh, I don't really want to, I'm not like Brad Pitt or something. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it really started to affect me the negative comments. And also I'll, I'll, I'll get really vulnerable with you guys here. Like also like a ton of like really, really attractive women start following you. And then you start to like, you know what I mean? Like follow them back. And then, and then your feed on Instagram starts to be like nothing, but these like really beautiful women that follow you and that love you or something like that, or that like, like your videos, I should say, they don't love me. They like my videos. And then like, it starts to affect your relationship. And then it starts to like seep into a lot of things. And, um, I, that's sort of like my biggest, my biggest problem in my past relationship was that like that, all that stuff just really started to, I didn't know how to handle it. And uh, nowadays I'm, um, I'm, you know, unfriending a lot of people on Facebook that I have never met before in my freaking life. I don't like, you know, and I, they should, they don't deserve to you know, be my friends. And I'm trying to declutter my social media feed and follow other things and like delete Instagram. And I mean, it really took over my life. It, it, it it's, it's, that 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 documentary what the um i forget what that documentary is but like the documentary that talks about how social media like companies like their algorithm sort of controls us and you know it's it, it, they show us what they know will keep us coming back uh, that's what happened to me i fell into that big time and uh the fame sort of amplified that a little bit and so i've really really started developing some some horrible habits and um i've recently started to get out of that with the help of Jordan Peterson. Once again, we'll talk about Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, so, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I, that's, I hope that answers your question. I wanted to sort of get a little vulnerable with you and give you something worth, worth, worthwhile talking about, you know, for sure, man. That's thank you. We truly appreciate the vulnerability. And um, obviously just in our modern culture, it's like being successful and followers are just synonymous and, it seems like you can't be successful without having that social media presence. And I mean, I definitely get caught in like, just once you get that ball rolling a little bit, it's like, it's a drug and you just want to keep feeding it. And in your writing, I've definitely noticed you are very vulnerable. You say what's on your mind um, in your course, you know, you say, right, angry, like, right. About what really like matters to you, what you truly care about. And where do you say, obviously it's not easy, but would you, how do you basically stay true to yourself? Even when you're blowing up, you're getting big. Um, how do you even know that it's you who's still posting and, um, it's still you on your social media and not just what people expect of you? Mm, that's a good question. It's almost like, how do you, uh, how do you balance between like writing something or making a video about something that, uh, you know, it's going to blow up or, you know, that might do well, do better in the feed as opposed to a video that like you really want to make and that like your heart sort of speaking to you about. Um, I, it's, 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 it's a hard answer. I, I think one thing I would say is um, whenever I make a video, 
or write a blog post that is true to who I am, I'm excited before it goes live. Um, there's something exciting about that, uh, being honest and sharing a, an opinion that you know um, the world maybe not might not have, have have seen that often. I think I messed up my grammar there. Writer here, um, but you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Um, I get excited before I, I publish it, before it goes live. I mean, on Facebook, I used to schedule my videos for the next day. And so I'd be excited that night. You know, I'd be like, all right. And then I'd wake up the next morning and it'd be live. And I'd, I'd go right to the comments to see what people were saying, to see how they were responding to it. And so I think it's, it, you, you, after you publish so many, so many things online, you really just start to feel it you just really start to feel when you're being authentic. And I think for the first like year or so of my blog, like my video creation career, I wasn't being super authentic. And I think that last year I was uh, much more authentic and I was starting to talk about things that maybe I shouldn't talk about. Maybe like, cause I'm a foreigner, I shouldn't be talking about this. Why, why should I tell Filipinos what to do? Why should I criticize their culture? I have problems in my culture. You know, why should I criticize their government? My government has problems, but it's like, I started to come to this realist. I mean, I'm, this, I'm getting off track, but I started to come to this realization that, um, you know, these people need help. They want somebody to be their voice. It doesn't matter. You should speak up for what's right, no matter what. And it doesn't matter whether it's yours or whether it's somebody else's, so just speak up for what's right uh, as, at, at, in the way that you see it. And so, um, yeah, that's what I tried to do. And that's what really felt good to me when I started to make those kinds of videos in the Philippines. So I guess the long story short is it just, you just really feel it. It just deep down, you feel it in your heart. It's really, it's kind of a hard thing to, to, to explain. Yeah. No, I think that nails it. You, you know, when you're being you and you know, when something's off and you're just doing something to appease people or just to look good or, and I totally get that. I dream of moving to Japan, um, teaching English and be, you know, writing and kind of just continuing my writing career. And I, I've, as I've written just travel stories on Japan, I wonder, I'm like, who am I to write stories about Japan when, you know, I've been there once and I've watched people listen to it or you know just who am i basically just the imposter syndrome um but i think just having that little bit of that spark that it makes me excited more than anything to write those stories i'm like if that's happening i know i'm on the right track and who could tell me otherwise you know yeah yeah it's that curiosity <laughs> you gotta let that curiosity drive you and wherever that curiosity takes you that's where you're gonna probably do your best work and um and so, yeah, I mean, like I, I listen to Russell Brand sometimes on YouTube about what he talk, what he says about America, you, you know, the United States. Um, and so, uh, you know, and he's not from here, but I still listen to him. I still like respect his opinion because he's well, I think he's well educated and, and uh, he knows what he's talking about with a lot mm -hmm. of these things. And so, yeah, I mean, we could talk about that, too. That's a side thing. But uh, but yeah, just follow your curiosity. I think you're going to do your best work if you do that. Do you think it's natural to have a certain level of fear or I guess fear when you're being vulnerable and you're publishing something that's really close to you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, it, 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 there's definitely some fear. You definitely need to feel some fear. Um, over time, as I've gotten used to this, I have to admit, I feel less fear. And I feel more just relief. Like, finally, I'm going to say this. You know, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And, and I think that I, here's, here's something interesting that might answer your question better. I think you feel the fear before you write it. I think when you're going to put publish something that you really, really, like you're scared of publishing, you've been feeling that fear for a long time. Mm -hmm. When you go to sit down to write it, this, the fear for me, at least in my experience, sort of washes away. The, I, I got all the, the fear and the timidness out before I sat down at the computer. I thought for like weeks or months or possibly even years, like I'm going to write that. I'm going to write about that story of my life. Or I'm going to write about that piece. And so um, you get that fear out before you sit down. If you're not sitting down to write it, uh, you probably haven't gotten over that fear yet. Um, 
And so when I finally do sit down and I make that decision in my head and say, you know what, screw it. It's going to be better for me to publish this than keep it in my mind. Uh, I just feel a lot of like just relief uh, that I'm finally saying this. And, um, and, and also when you publish stuff that's more vulnerable, you start to get some amazing um, uh, reactions from your readers. And these reactions in the comments are just super helpful and supportive and encouraging. And like, I thank you for saying this. Like a lot of people say that. And so when you start to see their reactions, that takes away the fear as well. And then you want to be more vulnerable. And then you really start to get into this really good niche or groove where uh, you're saying everything you want to say and you're being supported for it. And that's just a really beautiful place to get to as a writer. And uh, it takes that initial fear, getting over that initial fear to, to understand that when you're vulnerable, people generally are really encouraging of it. That's like the, the best kept secret on the internet, it seems, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> that resonates with me so much. I think for me, it's, it's oftentimes the actual sitting down and writing. It's during that process that I feel like I step into the arena and I go a few rounds with my insecurity and my doubt. And then by the time I finish writing the article and I've articulated those feelings and those insecurities, then I feel the relief. And I just want to highlight what you said is that sometimes the most vulnerable, authentic stuff you share is what people respond to the most. And I've seen that in my own writing is the couple articles that I thought were throwaway articles that I didn't want to publish because they were too personal or I thought no one could relate to. That's when you get the text that says, thank you for writing this. This is exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah. And I'll, I'll piggyback off of that too, is like uh, the internet is a wash full of content. That's pretty much the exact same. It's pretty much said the same things over and over again, and the same, uh, you know, tips and advice is out there. Uh, and so, when someone decides to say "screw that" and and uh, I might say something that I don't see a lot of people saying, first of all, you immediately stand out, you know, and second of all, you're you know you're gonna you're gonna attract attention to that because you're different, you know. It's um. I, you know, I, I don't know. It's sort of like, if like that Corella movie, you know, like when Corella like comes in and she's like, always like, um, I don't know if anybody has seen that. I watched it the other day <laughs> and, uh, like she always comes in with like the better dress at all these events. And like, everyone's looking at her because she's like taking risks and stuff. It's sort of like that. Um, when you, when you do that, and I was reading this book called do cool shit. Uh, I'm sorry if I can't curse on here or not, but I'm, uh, I'm encouraged. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so this book uh, was written by Mikia Graywall, and it was written a, a couple of years ago. I read it in like 2013 or something. And uh, she said, well, she's a big believer um, of, of, of addressing taboo topics, talking about taboo topics, top, talking about topics that people don't want to talk about. Um, so I, I, I think that she created this company where she creates um, uh underwear or some, or I'm not sure exactly what it is. I think it's underwear for women in developing countries because like, like they, when they have their period, like, it's like really bad. It's like, it's, it's hard for them to like deal with that or something. And like, like this is her example of her, like living her, you know, creed. Like we need to talk about the taboo topics more like mental health, uh, you know, all, like all of these things that we're afraid to talk about. Those are the most fun things to talk about in actuality. Um, and so, yeah, for anybody reading or, or sorry, for anybody watching um, and listening, I would say like, don't be afraid to, uh, to address those like taboo topics more because if you do, you're immediately going to stand out, but make sure you do it in a tasteful way and make sure you're ready for it. It's a great point. And it's almost like when we don't talk about these things, it's just the weight of them becomes so much heavier. And the more that we don't talk about things and discuss, it's the more just the, the schism, you know, just keeps dividing us. And the only way we could kind of come to terms with each other and grow as people is really talking about these things and truly trying to see where other people are coming from, how other people live their lives. And I mean, obviously in this last year and a half, two years, it's been a lot of divide and it's because we, I don't know, man, it's kind of just stuck in our ways and we want something to, uh, 
just be angry at each other for angry it. about. Yeah. And <laughs> well, sorry, sorry. Uh, go ahead. I, I, well, um, one thing I wanted to say was, um, uh, darn, I just forgot it. <laughs> That's great. Just right when I cut you <laughs> off now, I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, darn, it's such a good point too. Um, okay. That's what I was, was going to say. So one of my big beliefs is when you write online, it's a, actually a really great way to grow personally, not just because you're expressing your thoughts and you're understanding how you think about things, but because you know damn well that somebody who disagrees with you is going to be in the comments section telling you why you're wrong. And a lot of times when we're with our friends or with our family, like they're not going to tell us that we're wrong. Like they're probably just going to want to keep the peace. But when you write online, um, a lot of times you're going to get a, pro, you're going to get, you know, introduced to the other side and that can really help you grow. If you come at it with an open mind, I mean, obviously not everybody in the comments is right, but, um, that can really lead to a lot of personal growth. So I just wanted to add that little point in, um, uh, for people that are looking to write online. So I'll shut up now. No, absolutely. And I just want to give a shout out to my man, Greg. He's, he's doing, you know, he started a nonprofit, um, life coach, but he also is like a great writer on medium. And, and just in general, but he posts on medium and I would just encourage anybody to write and even post it. Like if you're feeling something, if you have a thought, put it online and you will grow just from the, the feedback you get. And just how, like, you don't know what you really think until you un let it unravel on the page. I believe, I think writing really benefits all of us, <laughs> even if you don't see yourself as a writer, which Every time I tell somebody, like, just give it a shot. Like, I'm not a writer. Like, you don't know until you try. Well, it, well my sister sent me, well, the reason why I'm a writer in the first place is because my sister sent me journals when I went and worked for Disney uh, for eight months. And uh, she was like, you're going to want to remember this. You're going to want to write all your new memories down. And uh, you're going to look back on this and really enjoy what she wrote. And I've never heard a truer statement in my life like those journal i filled it out i filled i filled it filled out the journal that she sent me and uh that is like one of my most prized possessions and so even if you're what my point is even if you're doing it by yourself at home journaling is just um incredible for self-awareness i wrote a post about that and it's my most popular post called uh how to become ridiculously self-aware in 20 minutes journaling journaling oh. was the, was the answer so i highly recommend it for sure. Kind of changing, pivoting a little bit here. So how would you, how do you deal with just comparing yourself with other people? You know, we always just kind of talk about how the end goal is never really what we expect it to be. The finish line, it just keeps getting further away every time you hit it. And so like, that's just in terms of like social media followers or like, how do you deal with always wanting more and kind of being sad? Balancing wanting more basically and being satisfied with the moment. Yeah, another really great question. I, I have a actually have a huge problem with this, uh, even still with uh, comparing myself to other people, um, especially on media. What it seems like everyone's, uh, you know, competing to see like who can write the article about how much money they made and, and you know, how much I made with this article and everything like that. I mean, it just creates this part. It sort of like brings in this Instagram type element to medium where it's like, you start to see like beautiful people on Instagram and you start to wonder like, why can't I look like them? Or like, they look so much better than me. I wish I looked like them. Um, and so on medium, you sort of get that as well. When we talk about all the money that we make and I'm like a huge call, uh, yeah, to blame, I'm to blame for this as well. Um, <laughs> And so it's, it's honestly, I, I don't know if I have much to say because I still struggle with it a lot. Um, I think that, I mean, when, like when I see people that are like selling like way more online courses than me or something that really, that really like gets to me. Cause I'm like, darn, you know, I'm not as good as them or like they're making so much more money than me. But like, when I think about it, it's like, um, you know, I'm making enough. I'm good. I'm good with, with where I am. Uh, I don't really have to, uh, 
uh, be stressed out about my finances like I was when I graduated college and, you know, when I had 2000 bucks to my name and when I was driving out West. And so uh, just the fa- I think one thing that you should do, that a good piece of advice that I learned recently is don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to where you were a year ago. Um, and if I do that, then I know that I'm a better writer. Um, I, I, I make about the same amount of money, but I know I'm a better writer. I know I'm, I'm on a different path and I've, I've matured as a person, not just in my work, I've matured as a person. And I think I've become better. And so, yeah, that'd be my advice. Compare, compare yourself to yourself from a year ago, not to other people. For sure, for sure. What would you say, um, where's I gonna go with this? Greg, do you got anything? Yeah, I, I wanna take it kind of a <laughs> completely different direction, but I'm, I'm obsessed with people who are doing what they love and daring to dream and chasing what lights their soul on fire. And I always love hearing about the genesis of it. And the question I want to ask you is, who was the first person that you told, hey, I want to be a travel writer. I want to travel the world. I want to do cool shit. And I want to make money doing it. And what was the response? Yeah, I think it was my mom. Um, <laughs> so I'm really close to my parents. I just I actually just got off the call with, got off a call with them before we started talking. Um, but uh, I told my mom about it. And I remember I said, uh, I want to be a freelance writer and uh, this, I, not really a travel writer just yet. Cause that would come six months later. Uh, but I remember her like, not exactly taking that news very well. Uh, I mean, she, she, it wasn't like, she was like, you better not, you know, it wasn't anything <laughs> like that. It was just more so like, I'm not really sure about this, Tom. Um, I think it's a better decision if you, you know, sort of like stay at Panera Bread and work your way up. I was working at Panera Bread making freaking salads. You know what I mean? Like I was like working with college students, uh, which felt just like, I don't know, super crazy. Um, and I thought oh, like, I thought that maybe I could like get in good with the manager and like just try to like learn more, try to take a lot of shifts and like try to become a manager and then possibly work my way up into corporate or something. And my mom like really wanted me to do that. And because it was safer and, uh, you know, typical story of like, should I choose the safe route or should I choose the route that I want? And I remember her sort of like uh, urging me in that direction. And good thing I'm stubborn because I decided to go and freelance anyway. And uh, and she, me and her joke about it now and she's happy that I did what I did. And, uh, but I understand where she's coming from as well. So, yeah. Dude, I love that answer so much because the first person I told that I wanted to be a life coach was my mom. And- <laughs> The first thing she said was, you can't be a life coach. You're too young. And you like work up the courage to first you're thinking about it and you're not telling anyone. And you're like, maybe, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could make this a a life. And then that one day you have the courage to tell someone. And right when you tell them and put it out there, they, they just shoot it down. It's, it's tough. And we joke about it too now. And obviously, you know, I'm just starting my coaching career, but I think it's so important to for people to do what they truly want to do and live their own life and not the life others expect of them. Because otherwise you're going to be 85, 90 on your deathbed and you're always going to question and think about what if I had the courage to try that thing? What would my life have been like? Yeah, I think what Ben Franklin said, uh, Ben Franklin's my man. He said, uh, along with Jordan Peterson, we're making making my Mount Mount Rushmore of like awesome (laughs) people. what do you say? He said, most men, most men die twice. Once when they're, I forget exactly what he said, but I know, I know what he meant once when they're young and once at the end of their life, which basically means like we die when we decide to not follow our hearts or follow our dreams. And we also obviously die at the end of our lives. And so what he says is most men, most men die twice. So that's really sad. And that's actually one of my biggest fears is like being on my deathbed thinking like I didn't do what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't do everything I wanted to do. Uh, That's just a super big fear for me. Um, And that's driven a lot of my decisions and I'm still very scared of it. And uh, I try to remind, I mean, this is a stoicism thing. I think like you try to remind yourself that you're going to die one day and that actually it's not a more, not in a morbid way. It's just in a, it's just in a way of like uh, make sure that you, uh, you know, use all of your time wisely, you know? And so, yeah, 
that's all I have to say. You're, you're hitting on everything I love. Yeah, it's yeah. Me- memento mori, remember you must die. And last thing I'll say on the regret thing is that is actually the most common fear. A woman named Bronnie Ware, she was an end-of-life caregiver. And after interviewing 500 of her patients as to what was the single thing they regretted most throughout their lives, it was, I wish I would have had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. Yeah, um, that's, I hope I'm not one of those people. I mean, I'm sure I'll have regrets at, my, at the end of my life, you know, um, in some form or another, but, uh, but yeah, that just scares the crap out of me. It really scares the crap out of me. So hope I'm not that person. We'll see. It's, it's something it, we all deal with and man, it's, how do you know when you're on your track and you're truly living your life? And this act, this is a great transition into so in, in your article, actually, um, how to figure out what you want to do with your life, you talk about your personal legend. And this, this hit home with me. I'm a big fan of The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And you quote him um, in the article. He says, at that point in their lives, youth, everything is clear and everything is possible. They're not afraid to dream and to yearn for everything they would like to see happen to them in their lives. But as time passes, a mysterious force begins begins to convince them that it will be impossible for them to realize their personal legend. Whoever you are, or whatever it is that you do, when you really want something, it's because that desire originated in the soul of the universe. It's your mission on earth. How do we know when it's when our soul is, you know, driving the machine, and we're living our lives. I mean, obviously, I don't expect you to answer <laughs> that with a clear and concise answer. But sure. I think we know when we're living a life with no regret, and at least we're aiming at something and taking small, you know, incremental steps to get there. But that is a fear of mine as well. It's getting to the end of life and being like, I, I didn't live life on my terms. Like, what is what is success? You know, it's yeah. I don't know, I'm kind of rambling, but <laughs> no, it's super interesting. It's the, I've heard about this before as well, but um, just a funny anecdote. My mom re- read The Alchemist just recently because I recommended it to her because she had foot surgery and she had to recover for a few weeks. So I was like, you might like this book, mom. It's a really great book. Like <laughs> all the really successful people in the world have read it and they think it's awesome. And, um, and when she was at the uh, operating you know, sort of like waiting to get operated on. She was reading that book and the doctor came in and was like, oh, you're reading The Alchemist. I I read that book. I love that book, you know? And so she started to see like, you know, the community that is, that surrounds this book for so many people. Um, I think I wrote a blog post recently called, uh, well, actually a couple of years ago called, uh, you know, Finding Tom is my, you know, my, my uh, sort of vlog name, uh, my YouTube channel name and, and my, I have a website called findingtom.com and it was supposed to be, you know, finding Tom as in like, literally, where is he in the world? And then it started to take on another meeting, meaning where it was like, I'm also sort of finding myself. And so I wrote that you're never going to really find yourself. You're never going to like grab that person and say, I found you. There you are. Tag your it. Like, you know, now we can go on with the game. Uh, you're going to get glimpses of that person. You're going to see that person like duck behind a tree or something, and you're going to get catch them in the peripheries. And uh, you're never going to really find who you are because your passion is always going to change. Like what you want in life is always going to change. And so um, I, I uh, don't think this answers the question that great, but I think it's a, another good little anecdote to add is like, your passion is going to change. I mean, like what I wanted a couple of years ago was to be a vlogger and to make videos online. And that's what I wanted to do. And now I did it. And what's next, you know? (laughs) And so where does my passion lie now? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I know I like to help people. I know I like to help people make stuff online. So I think that's what I'm trying to focus for focus on right now. Um, but I think a piece of advice that I can give is just, uh, if you're never going to catch it, it's going to continue to, to shift for you throughout your whole entire life and make sure that you have a bunch of arrows so that you can try to, so that you can try to hit it a couple of times. You're not just going to hit it one time. You're going to have to hit it a couple of times. So that's what I'll say. I hope that made sense. Yeah. 
for sure. I, I love that because it is so true. It's like when we get to that point that we thought we'd be happy at, it's never what we expect. And it's just we're both, you know, trying to figure out how can we really be satisfied and fulfilled with where we are while also knowing that we're, we are striving for our dreams and at least what we think our dreams are at this point, but just kind of trying to reconcile both of those perspectives of being grateful for where we are in life. And um, obviously there's so much to be grateful for, but also realizing that we kind of have to take the action to at least move and aim at something. And, you know, the closer you get to it, the further that thing kind of moves away. But I love what you say just about like seeing yourself just kind of hiding behind the trees and getting a glimpse of, wow, is that maybe that's the real me? Maybe I, cause you feel it. Like you feel an ember burning in you that really lights up when you know you are being authentic to yourself. And that kind of brings you to, an, uh, please, do you, if you have something to say. Well, I think, yeah, I think that like life is so complicated, you know, like I think a lot of people say like you should find your passion and, uh, but I think it's, it's a lot of nuance to that as well. It's, it's, it's also like uh, Mark Manson likes to say, another guy on my, my, my Mount Rushmore. It's nothing but white guys. I need to <laughs> add in some diversity here. But, um, but yeah, Mark Manson says that uh, you need to, I think he said this, you need to like, everyone needs to eat a shit sandwich. No matter what you do in your life, you're going to have to eat some sort of, you know, crap sandwich. And what he means is that like, even if you write online and you love what you do, there's going to be an aspect to that that you don't really like. And so, um, you know, even for me, that's, it, like search engine optimization. I hate it. I can't stand it. Makes my writing feel robotic. Can't, don't like it, it's, but it's the, you know, the crap sandwich that I have to eat. And so um, I think that there's going to be moments where you have this like religious freaking experience and you're like, you're like, wow, I feel really grateful. I'm really happy right now. And then like a couple of days later, you'll probably feel terrible. <laughs> and so uh, when you have a religious moment like that, uh, I think you're on the right path you know I, I that's something that i that i would say i think that's so freeing to hear that you shouldn't expect to find that one thing you're going to do for the rest of your life and it shouldn't be rainbows and lollipops every single day like you're going to have days where you're doing what you love but it sucks maybe you are feeling sick or you're just in a bad mood or you're doing seo and you don't want to do that it's it's liberating to hear that even when you're living the dream there's still days that are really hard. That's something that we have dealt with a lot. It's like we quit our corporate jobs to dare to dream bigger, to follow our dreams. And yet we have days where we are just in the dumps. And it's, it's, ni it's nice to hear from someone such as yourself. Yeah, well, I, I think really like what we're, the real question we're all asking is like, how do we find meaning in life? You know, um, especially with, with our work. Like we want to, we, we don't just want to work and we don't just want to have fun while we're working. We also want to have some sort of a meaning there that, um, that we feel like we're contributing to a greater good. And uh, I'll quote Jordan Peterson just like one last time. <laughs> and he says, I think when, in this book, he talks a lot about his recent book. He talks a lot about responsibility and how responsibility gives our life, our lives meaning. Uh, so he's, he's a big proponent of having kids and getting married and, and having these responsibilities, because these are what are ultimately going to give your life meaning. And so um, with work, I think what's given my life meaning in work is uh, other people, just like doing things for other people, trying, like even if it's a nonprofit or donating some money every now and then, uh, that just really gives your life a lot of meaning. Um, and uh, I, would, I would urge people to, to, look, to look down that route, try to make people a part of your work as much as you can and your life that's really ultimately what's going to make you happy and that's what the, that's what i learned in the philippines people there love people they love each other they're very connected to their communities um and that's even what in japan and some of their islands there with the centarians i read about this though um i forget exactly what that term is uh um, blue zones uh, ik ikigai yeah the blue uh, zones the blue zones too mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then the ikigai is like the the word I think for like your life's meaning or mm -hmm. I, I've read that book just recently, but like what separates those blue zones, these people in these blue zones are a lot of different things, but like one of the core features of that is they're very 
um, attuned and um, aware of, of their, the people living around them and they take care of each other and that gives their life meaning and that makes them happier. And so, yeah, I, I'll just add that little anecdote for people if they, uh, you know, for, for, for in the future and in, in your work in your life. Tom, you are just pushing my buttons. I, I coach people on Ikigai. It means your reason for being. I love that. I love Mark Manson. I love Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> we could go on forever for hours, but I think we'll probably start wrapping things up. One question I do want to ask before we do is helping people is something you're aiming at. What are other things that you're aiming at and how do you define success for yourself? Other things I'm aiming at. I think one of the big things I'm aiming at is just trying to be really, really honest with myself um, and take on more responsibility. I've talked about this already. I think that's probably like my main thing. Like originally I like did not want to get married. I felt like that was going to, you know, lock me down and I wasn't going to be free anymore. But now like, I just really want to lock myself down. I want to have more responsibilities in my life. I think that's going to make it, uh, make my life have more meaning. I've been traveling a lot. Um, I've seen a lot of really amazing places, met some really cool people. Um, but there's always been something that, that feels like it's been missing from my life. Even though I'm happy, it's, it feels like something's been missing. And I think that responsibility is more responsibility is missing less selfishness. Um, uh, and trying to lock myself down. So now I like want to get, now I'm like looking for a partner. I'm like looking for someone to get married to. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I, I want that to happen. Um, and I, I, I want to try to find a community here in Mexico city. I want to try to be a good friend. I want to try to be a better family member and, um, and just improve myself, read a ton of books. Uh, just, I mean, I've read like 16 or so books this year. I stopped recently because I'm too busy, but that's one thing I'm really focusing on a lot. And it's just been an amazing help. It's just, uh, I mean, it got me, reading a lot of books this year, turned me on to Bitcoin. It turned me on to Jordan Peterson, uh, uh, you know, marriage, uh, bullet journaling, just so many really cool things have come into my life that have changed my life because of just, just reading. So um, yeah, um, that's what I would say. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just personally, as a writer, I've had that same kind of question, like, am I, cause my dream is to kind of move to another country and at least have that experience like for a couple of years or, um, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to be solitary. I'm a, I'm a writer. I, you know, it's a solitary kind of thing, but then just the more you write online, you realize that it is other people that make it worthwhile. Other people and our connections make life worthwhile. And yeah, man, i phenomenal answer i know it's coming from the heart and that's that's the most important thing just connecting on this journey and man absolute honor to have you on you've been huge impact in my life and i can't thank you enough for everything you're doing and keep on keeping on brother yeah thank you <laughs> thank you both so much for having me it's really great time talking and uh blabbing about <laughs> mentioning jordan <laughs> peterson a little too many times Couple we always minutes do. We always do. Um, uh, so yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait to, uh, to, to share this with my audience. Awesome, man. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. This is episode 39 of the dare to dream podcast. We love you guys. We love you guys.